Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 47 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we will be talking about is Salesforce administrator certification actually worth it? In the present world the customer is king. They are deciding what to buy and where to buy it from. Hi, Dave. It's exciting to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is kind of a niche topic, but it keeps coming up in my world, so I'm glad to address it. Yeah, sure. No, it really is. Uh, you know, so a great opening question then for you is, is cloud-specific certifications everything that it's cracked up to be? I think in a word, no. I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is... Um, you can uh, you know, get some good positions by getting certified in cloud. And certainly if I'm going to go into a niche position, Salesforce administration certification, you know, is um, you know, gonna allow me to get a position and really going to allow me to do something for a certain period of time. But all these things really have expiration dates. And so there's gonna be a time where it's not as difficult to administer Salesforce, administer Salesforce and your ability to kind of show a certification to do it is not necessarily going to have the juice. My, my larger issue is people getting positions around the certification and not necessarily getting it around whatever job title that they have, you know, may not be the way to go. And I think companies, because we're in such a labor shortage crunch and cloud computing labor is, you know, in huge demand right now, are hiring people based on these certifications, and I think they become tactical hires in nature, where the tactics may change. And you know, so suddenly you're you know paying somebody eighty to one hundred twenty thousand dollars to be a certified Salesforce administrator, and then suddenly a couple of years down the line, we realize that we're not going to use Salesforce anymore. The administration uh, technologies are now automated. We don't need this person. You know, then what do they do? Are you going to get them certified in something else or? You know, is there really a career around doing this? So I, I think there's a disconnect from the uh, people who are consuming this labor to really think of certifications as really the ticket to enter into the job without sort of some sort of a career path for the person, and that's really doing them a disservice. And people who are thinking tactical, the fact that we're just going to get an extra twenty thousand dollars a year, so they take this particular position where they should be thinking about this in the context of a career. And, you know, advising people of this is kind of difficult because they're really looking at getting into the tactical job positions to get the money that they need. They're not necessarily considering what the future is going to bring. But I've seen many careers kind of uh, disjointed and kind of driven off track because they do go after these niche technologies and they end up not necessarily looking after, you know, the larger abstract, you know, reason that they're doing work. And they may not be happy with it. That's one aspect of it but ultimately they may find themselves going from one technology to another. And I don't think that's gonna drive a career that's just basically gonna drive frustration. Yeah, it truly will. I mean, it's almost got its own economy that though, drive, you know, these certifications driven by particular roles under you know, specific brands. It's, it's kind of almost like a trend where people are brand hopping. You know, they're, they're finding that they've get, they're getting two or three years as a, you know, working under Google or then moving to Azure or something like that. There are people out there that are doing that. They don't seem to be sustainable in one particular field. And I think that's it's certainly going to be more evident, um, like you mentioned a moment ago, you know, with the artificial intelligence coming into things where, you know, these roles are, from an administration point of view are going to be null and void. It's like we go back 50 years and we think of how, you know, a car factory was manufacturing cars with human beings and everyone was like, wow, you know, really, I don't think a computer can do this. You know, that's ridiculous. There's no way a robot's going to build a car. Don't be stupid, you know. And it's a similar sort of thing when you combine things like, you know, ML, AI, and you've got, you know, um, blockchain involved as well. A combination of all these different forms of technologies that we're embracing now in different ways coming together. I mean, many, many jobs and many, many roles that people are, you know, getting on the, the ladder into, you know, IT or cloud computing are almost going to be null and void, aren't they? Yeah, and it always is. And I think that people who think about tactical technology, specific technologies as a way to drive their career, and are ultimately going to be making a mistake. And so there has to be some sort of a larger thing that you're interested in doing. You know, my career example, I, I move after technology trends. So I kind of spot something that I think is interesting, 
that I believe is emerging. I'm not always right about the emerging aspects of it. Cloud computing back in the early 2000s and late 90s uh, was following that space, and eventually it emerged into a technology. But if I learn specific technologies under cloud computing and really kind of just get behind that, then I'm limiting my, my options going forward because I don't have a general knowledge of what cloud computing is as, as a, what an architect should do and don't have understanding of what a cloud is out of a SaaS provider, for, you know, salesforce.com. And therefore, if the technology goes away, which it always does, it always changes and or goes away or is, you're going to be automated out of a position, then you're unable to, in essence, pivot into something else that's going to lie to make money. And so you're going to get a, you know, basically go back to the old habits, which is go out and get a certification with something that you think is hot, you know, whether it's at AWS or, you know, pivot to Microsoft or pivot to Google or pivot to Alibaba or something else. And then you're in essence playing the same game again. And you're, there's two people at fault here, by the way, the people who are really kind of betting on the certification to get them some sort of a tactical job for a certain amount of time. And also the people that are hiring these people that aren't necessarily looking at a larger career for them and, 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 it, and it basically how they're going to sit in the company and kind of grow the company going forward and grow within the company going forward. And if those questions aren't answered and we're not guiding them or coaching them to really kind of consider this, we're not necessarily doing anybody a favor and the company nor the employee. Yeah, it is one of those things that, that some people fall into that trap that they believe that this is their golden ticket, you know, and, and it, that golden ticket may last for, who knows. <laughs> the technology moves at such a rate, it's very difficult to, uh, to to give it an actual figure of how long that career move is going to be there. And one of the things we spoke about, um, I think it was about a month ago or so, was that AWS architect role. You know, at the moment, they're they're commanding a really, you know, a healthy salary and they're, they're a real value to the business but like like you said you know within six months to two years there's going to be plenty of AWS architects out there and it's going to dilute that 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 generous uh, salary so look what's your words of advice I suppose it moves us on nicely to your top three tips really at this point so what, what would you advise then people uh, looking at these sort of certifications well, I, I think that, uh, you know, ultimately, you want me, I'll get into my tips. You need to hire people, not paper. And, and I think that, um, you know, if you're relying too much on a certification, on basically some sort of a, um, you know, uh, test that you took that's going to validate the fact that you understand, at least on paper, these particular kinds of technologies, whether it's, you know, even the courses I do or AWS provides a certification, things like that. You're really not necessarily going to do yourself or the company much much uh, of a favor. Now, if this is a larger, a small tactical technology you're learning within a larger career path, perfectly fine with that. Um, so, you know, I have people I work with that are, uh, in essence, moving after a consulting career path, but they've, you know, understood AWS architecture, Microsoft architecture, but that's in the context of their ability to do architecture in general in an IT environment and really kind of grow those skills going forward and get those experiences and because they work on a variety of things. But if you're going to get an AWS certification, like an AWS developer certification, you're just going to develop small tactical applications in AWS for the next couple of years, you can guarantee that that world's going to change around you. AWS is going to add services, delete services, things like that. And unless you're able to kind of get back on the, the bandwagon and get, keep getting recertified and keep learning the technology, you're not going to be successful. And I think people who think that they will just kind of end up being disappointed. We, we saw this in the past. We had uh, network certification. We had network certification. That was a, a Nobel thing that was around and uh, Microsoft uh, network certification that was around as well. And, you know, people who had that certification were in essence, that was the ability to kind of print money because they got some jobs fairly quickly. But I also talked to them a couple of years after they got the certification and they told me that this was the biggest mistake they ever made because in essence, they chased a particular technology and not necessarily a career path. And so they're unable to get the larger raises because they're not able to step up in those strategic positions because they don't have the experience because they focus too much on a specific technology. Next would be, you know, figure out the long-term comp plans for how these things are going to work. In other words, I get, you know, $120,000 this year because I'm an AWS hotshot with certification. But, you know, next year, what is that going to look like? The year after, what's going to look like? And am I going to be able to kind of maintain these pivots to different kind of technologies to keep this up? And you're going to find that if you're going after these kind of tactical technology, specific technology career paths, 
that your plat your salary is typically going to plateau, and you're not going to find that you're going to have the big longer uh, compensation plans going forward because the companies are going to treat you like you're treating yourself as someone who understands specific skills or has specific skills, and they're going to use you the, to leverage those specific skills. And that's because you defined yourself that way. And you need to create a proper training plan that includes additional certification, you know, going forward. And so. Don't if you're going to go after a certification career path, make sure that you're doing many certifications and make sure this is a context of a career path that you're looking to looking to do. And, you know, I always tell people to get a mentor, get someone who's in the industry that you admire. Someone has a career path you think that would be parallel to something you're looking to do and get their insights as to what they know, where they found things out and you know how you can move things forward. Um, because I think companies going forward are going to look more to people. They're going to basically become creative and innovative in how they do their jobs. And that allows them to grow the company and take the company to the next level. That's gonna become just as important and more important to whatever specific tactical skills that they may have. Yeah, absolutely, great top tips. And, and I think that th third tip really resonates. I think if you're, if you're looking to maneuver yourself in a, in a particular career path, finding that mentor and, and reaching out to them to get their advice and their opinion on, you know, and, and acting as a catalyst to not wasting any valuable time on, on, on one rabbit hole over the other rabbit hole. I think that's, that's very valuable. And, and again, it's, it's a great way, these certifications, to get your foot on the ladder, to get involved in a, an organization, um, you know, but like you say, you know, you, you want to be able to feather your nest with other certifications that are going to give you that broader brushstroke of the, the, the overall career path that you're going to take. I think that's a uh, yeah, great top three tips there, Dave. I, I really, really enjoyed those. And thanks for being part of the training show this week. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. And again, feel free to chime in if you if you need any advice from myself or, or Dave. We're happy to reach out and help. Um, you know, Dave's awesome like that. He's got some great experience and, and, and I'll help where I can with the recruitment side of things and, uh, and what, what you need to do in the next best step. So, yeah, feel free to reach out. And, and we, we're on Twitter. So uh, David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I myself on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. And remember to like, subscribe and comment to the channel on YouTube uh, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future channel shows that we do on training the c-suite show and australia and sort of global cloud tech in general as well so check out for those uh, we're on instagram as well so you can follow us on instagram like us on facebook uh, so that you're going to keep up with all the latest blogs that we, we do with david as well so there's some great content going out there that, that that's got a lot of value there to to help people that, within cloud computing so look thanks for watching and until next week